Hi guys, we are at KLGCC attending the launch by Lexus Malaysia of uh, the new Lexus RX over there and here the new, all new Lexus ES. So for the purpose of this video, we are focusing our attention on the ES. Now some of you may remember the ES began life initially as, uh, as a Camry with a Lexus badge, right? Uh, the previous generation ES was noteworthy for being almost an E-class sized vehicle with offered at C-class prices of going for about what? 240,000, 260,000, the same money that you would spend on a 3 Series. But this one, um, it has now become a bit more expensive than that lah. Okay, no, so now previously, right, uh, the previous ES, we have looked at that as something as, uh, as a logical upgrade for a Camry Accord Tiana owner. Whereas this one, uh, it, has as it has become a bit of a bigger jump, a much bigger jump price-wise. So you see, if you look at the previous ES, right, 240k, 260k, um, if you have come from an Accord or Camry where previously the price was what, 160, 170k, you make that jump up to the 240k stratosphere, you could either go to a C-Class or 3 Series, which is a smaller car in essence, or you can go to an ES, which in which you you uh you either you upsize a bit and at the same time move into a more luxurious badge. This new ES really goes higher. It, the the luxury variant. Okay, there are two variants. Uh, okay, sorry, that's the premium variant, priced at. Wait for this, guys. Three hundred thousand ringgit. Here, this one you're looking at here. This is the luxury model priced at 333,000 ringgit so it has not be, it is not cheap but uh, as I checked out the car earlier I also found that this car actually um, well Lexus have also stepped up um, the build of this car and for starters they, it no longer shares its mechanical parts with the Camry maybe a few bits in the underpin in the chassis and all that lah, but this car essentially effectively runs on its own platform. The engine, okay, despite being also a 2.5 liter four cylinder engine, probably even built off the same block, but features an entirely different valve train. Okay, the uh, VVTi motor in the actuation in this uh, in this ES engine is electron is electrically activated. So its power is run by an electric motor. All right as opposed to a more conventional mechanical actuation in the in the uh, Camry's engine. So it also gets an 8-speed automatic transmission compared to 6 speeds in the Camry. So it's that mechanically this car is very very extremely unrelated to the Camry aside from a few maybe a few generic parts. Okay, uh, and also the the looks of this car has evolved substantially. Previous generation ESs have always been uh, rather, well, rather plain, rather uninspiring to look at. This one, this one is very, very sharply styled. Looks almost dynamic even. It's, uh, it, it is really distancing itself from its, the, the predecessor's reputation as being somewhat of an uncle's car. I mean, just look at the front. Look at the way they style this front. Okay, we know this is the signature Lexus spindle grille, but this car is uh, is very dynamic looking. It has a lot of street presence. All right, see how the how the daytime running lights. Okay, very very it, it is a very sh sharply angled. Okay, and how this the signal lights uh, illuminate. You know, in a sweeping sequence, full LED illumination, and uh, unique to the luxury model here. These eighteen inch wheels. They are not ordinary eighteen inch wheels. What? These wheels, right, are uh, inside these wheels, okay? They have a bit of a hollow structure inside the wheels that serve to disperse tire noise. So this contributes then to a quieter ride, okay? Now, we come to the back. Let me just show you the back. Uh, so, see, this is... Uh, so, you get the, uh, the LED illumination, three, three L's. And uh, surprisingly, they have left the reverse camera rather exposed. 
and but well small thing there lah the boot is uh is uh electrically powered okay uh surprisingly this boot doesn't look that big okay doesn't look that big uh doesn't have a folding facility but it has that one thorough through opening there through the center armrest power closing and uh, let's just look inside so here check out the dashboard and okay let me just show you the uh, the door card first now this is what I've been talking about okay in many cars so many cars right their color schemes have been very in, in our market are very very plain very unambitious this one at least you know you see a two-tone color it brings out the design of the door lines so you see you get you see this line how all these lines you know stitches trim inserts how they all interplay very very nicely so this door I mean it looks like it really looks like you know the engineers the designers they put effort to design this door now we look inside the cabin now one thing about the uh, previous gen oh my god what was that set inside here left the aircon really cold man okay let me just adjust the aircon first ah huh? okay all right close the door so here we have so you have a full fully digital uh, instrument cluster okay uh, and you have this large screen here no touch function it's all navigated by this touchpad here um, so you what you do is that uh, okay I can't show you the okay maybe I can so like look like see the pointer there right so I just sweep this to access the, the various functions okay not particularly intuitive I think at first glance but perhaps this is something that uh, that takes a bit of time to getting used to so got shortcut keys here map access directly access the map go to the menu or back so you go to the menu first and see what are the functions here okay yeah so this one this takes a bit of a learning curve takes a bit of getting used to oh and besides uh so once you've let's say like once you've found your selected feature right just press the pad down to select all right uh and here's the switch gear this switch gear looks uh oh wow okay so this uh this display also it's a it's a nice display nice fonts see the one complaint about previous gen lexus models is that particularly the previous gen es sometimes you feel that hey the internal switch gear feels a bit a bit toyota ish you know it feels like it, it's taken from a toyota but this one not so much this one it feel the the, the quality the look and feel you know like all these panels here everything right when you when you touch the various points all the various touch points right it no longer feels like you are sitting in a rebatched Toyota. This time around, you really feel like you are sitting in a proper Lexus. Okay. Uh, oh yeah. So here you have this uh, drive mode selection: normal, sport, eco. Wow, a very elaborate switch for traction control. And here is the uh, here is the center console display. Center console, a rather well a deep cup holder but only a single one and this is this slot is rather deep you can i would think you can stand a whole handphone up there and yep so two usb ports here this is another storage uh cup holder but it looks, it looks like it has a hidden trick and it does so you can either make it uh shallow or you can lift this lid up to add depth to this compartment and this console box check it out so you can open it this direction or this direction uh, not particularly new from Lexus but still neat trick nonetheless Qi wireless charging pad here and this this part here this tray here is deep okay it goes quite down quite far down okay this is not movable but it's quite far down right so you can see I'm almost to my elbows down uh with the with the lid level so here okay this passenger seat you can adjust it from the back with this with this uh remote control functions here this variant has a sunroof as well so let's adjourn to the back seat so 
so let's sit inside okay now fantastic leg room let me just okay so you can see here fantastic leg room good thigh support angles fantastic i'm also sorry i'm also liking the good recline angle of these seats Headroom is uh, is surprisingly low because maybe it's, it's because Lexus uh, describes this vehicle as having a bit of a coupe profile, so the roof uh, is a bit it runs a bit low, and here at the back, so you've got a uh, dedicated blowers, two point two two point one amp USB chargers and a twelve volt socket. So rear zone climate control is operated from the armrest. You also have a control here to lower the rear sunshade. And uh, oh, you can also control the audio from here as well. Let me just try it. Okay. Ah. Okay, so we are broadcasting the Malaysia game here. Go Malaysia. Go Harimau Malaya. And uh, yeah, so you can have, so you, you adjust the, the temperature here as well. Then you've got heated rear seats. This opens up a pair of cup holders. Okay, this one feels uh, relatively solid. And here, open this up. You got a storage box here. Hmm. Well, not oh uh, well. It's a uh, it's a good depth. And this connects you to the boot. Okay, it, it, it connects you to the boot. At the back. Nice. Okay. So up here, you got dedicated uh, lights. For the internal for the rear occupants you got uh, uh manually raise uh deployed sun shades okay yeah so here we have it guys this is the uh the all new lexus es and uh well certainly not not cheap relative to its predecessors but also at the same time without doubt this is a car that has um it has pushed itself up uh in terms of its uh perceived value all right there's no doubts that compared to previous generation es's this car really feels like a one segment up product it is just that i think it still takes quite a bit of effort to convince people to move away from a Mercedes E-Class or a BMW 5 Series.